Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. Now, it's no secret that in any monster taming game, your monsters are going to have various moves that they can utilize in battle in order to get off damage or apply certain status conditions or whatever. That being said, in Cassette Beast, we do have a very interesting use of the move system that takes it a step beyond just monsters being able to learn various attacks. The stickers present within Cassette Beast allow monsters to not only learn moves as they level up, but also allow for a vast amount of customization via the ability to peel off and place these stickers on your cassette tapes. In today's video, we're going to explore how stickers act in battle, how you can obtain stickers, the depth of customization, and more. So as per the usual, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Okay, so when it comes to the various cassette tapes that you can acquire in Cassette Beasts, each of them will have a star rating which will influence the amount of stickers they can hold. Star ratings are essentially your cassette's independent level, ranging from 1 to 5 stars, and if you want to learn more about that, you can check out my Cassette Beats Evolution Guide, which dives into how the star system interacts with the evolution system. Anyways, as your cassette tape levels up and you start getting stars, it will gain a few new stickers and slots for stickers that you can customize. Stickers can be found throughout the world in various chests, bought from merchants, from completing quests, and through leveling up your monsters, so keep an eye on your sticker inventory as you might have some really good moves that you glossed over. You can essentially think of stickers like TMs from Pokemon, but instead of the TMs being used up when you apply them or being very limited in their scope, every single move in Cassette Beast is essentially a TM and thus can be peeled away from one monster and allocated to another. In this case, there is actually value in recording monsters that you know will have a certain sticker move in their pool just so you can have that sticker as well so you get some pretty interesting stuff on that front monsters can have up to eight sticker slots when fully leveled up there are two types of stickers those being active stickers and passive which in the first case will just act as your typical move in any monster taming game that will either apply a physical attack a ranged attack or just a status effect of some sort then you have passive stickers which take up a slot but more so act like an ability in the sense that they persist without being needed to be selected stickers also come in various types which again makes sense if you're applying an attack that attack has to have some sort of type that comes with it now that being said there is such thing as typeless stickers which what that does is it actually becomes the type of the monster holding said sticker so if you're using a move like smack because it's typeless it'll become the type of the monster using smack so if it's fire type now you have a fire type smack interestingly enough if you're fused that typeless attack will actually become dual typed if your fusion's dual typed so even more layers of complexity there stickers also come in different rarity you obviously have average ones that are just common there's uncommon stickers and rare stickers as well however stickers that are uncommon and rare will get added effects and if you have a bootleg monster it'll receive a higher chance of receiving these more rare stickers here you can see my jamungled has a few rare stickers that actually boost various effects when i have empty sticker spots so you can kind of play around with that now back over to the types of stickers that exist like i stated active stickers can be broken down into three major categories those being melee attacks ranged attacks and status conditions slash miscellaneous these are pretty self-explanatory uh, they'll require some amount of ap ranging from zero to max depending on the power of said move and the physical ones utilize the melee stat the ranged ones utilize the ranged attack stat and the status and misc stickers essentially provide various effects such as boosting your own stats debuff the enemy and a slew of other stuff as well once again the other type of stickers that being passive will automatically apply certain effects like giving the user multi-target upon entering the battle allowing for a revenge strike when taking damage etc and they don't use ap now there are a few points of interest when it comes to actually obtaining stickers there are these vendors in the main section of the hub town that will sell various stickers that are broken down into different categories. You'll notice that the first time you come here, the middle vendor is missing. If you interact with their stand, you'll actually get a side quest associated with it. It's really straightforward. Just follow wherever the side quests take you and eventually they'll come back. But anyways, these stickers will rotate every single day. So make sure you're checking on them frequently to see if there's any sort of hidden gems in there. All of these require pulp to buy. So keep that in mind too. You'll also find two more vendors inside this house in the west side of town once you drop the bridge which can be done by just going around the town to the north and then sort of pushing the bridge at the switch but all in all stickers are an integral part of the battle system and the amount of complexity and customization that comes along with it is truly something that i think more games in the genre should strive for cassette beast does this amazing thing where the systems are super complex but also straightforward enough so that you're not 
feeling like you need to do hours of research in order to come out with a win. So I really do like that. Now, that being said, if you do want to stay up to date on all things Cassepis or just monster taming in general, definitely subscribe to this channel for daily monster taming videos. Check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon link below as well. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Drogh Ghost, Dark Persona, Candy Morency, and Exodus, and we'll see you next time. Peace.